Hey, Kippy. I got a new box of plants. Want to see what I got? Yeah, come on over. Come on. See what I got. Yeah. This is a nice specimen. This is a ponderosa lemon. I wonder how this plant actually got to me. Where am I? Can I help you with anything? Yeah, I was actually just wondering where my plant comes from. This is Logies and this is where it came from. Wow. Would you like to see where it started? Yeah, I would love to. Let's go. Okay. So this is our mother lemon tree, our ponderosa lemon, which um, has been here at Logies since um, 1900. Wow, it is an old tree. So it's a very old tree. and um, It's planted right into the ground? It's planted in the ground in the greenhouse. It's wow. been here in the ground. Um, they probably planted it back in the uh, uh, 1920s, I think it was planted in the ground. Wow. And, um, Ponderosa is a very vigorous plant, so um, we harvest um, a couple thousand cuttings a year off of this mother tree. And it also, as you see, it produces fruit, um, which um, these are actually somewhat small in terms of the size. They um, can actually get bigger, but it depends upon um, the amount of water it's getting and how much fruit it's actually putting on the plant. There's actually one very large one way up in the top there. So um, in terms of our propagation of this, uh, we try to harvest cuttings that are actually just like this, where they've actually matured. So, yeah. so if you look at, um, it's actually not much, soft, it's soft growth on it right now, but we actually wait until that leaf is actually hardened up like that. So mm -hmm. that when it goes into the propagation benches, um, it has some um, resiliency before it roots. And a couple things about ponderosa is they're very easy to root by cutting. So, Citrus can be produced by cutting or they've done by grafting. And this one doesn't need that. I mean, it roots very easily for us. Um, and so what we do is we actually just find some of these long shoots. Um, generally, as you can see, there's a glass above us here. So we're always trying to trim back and head the mother plant back to, um, uh, to keep her from running into the glass. And this runs up and then we cut it and runs up and cut it. And that's been going on for um, many decades. So you're, you're pruning as well as, you know, getting some right. propagation. We never throw any cuttings out off of this tree. This, you know, when we're pruning a lot of stuff in the greenhouses here, um, it'll go into the compost, but um, this plant is valuable. And so she actually pays for her space quite well. Yeah, and, um, very good. Especially if you're getting thousands of cuttings off of thousands her. Thousands of cuttings, yeah. yeah, every year. And it's, um, it's, a, it's several cycles. We probably will prune this four, four times a year once it runs up. So they let it flush out so we get a lot of cuttings off and they cut it back. And, and then we have to be very cautious that when we're pruning it, and this would be with growing the plant also, that you don't prune off the flowers. Exactly. So all these younger shoots that are coming out right. sideways here, right, you can see there's yeah. an old fruit on that, but all these pieces that are coming out sideways here, um, we would leave those. We're only harvesting the stuff that's running up against mm. the glass. So here's our cutting. So let's go, um, uh, I'll show you how we um, propagate these and put these into our mist system. Yeah, yeah. that sounds great. Yeah. Lead us yeah. out. Oh, nice. So what are we doing here? All right, so this is um, the process of striking the cuttings um, to get them into the propagating benches. Um, and we used, in propagating, we use several different methods. Um, these are quite easy to root, and so we'll root them in the media um, that we're going to pot them in. And, um, and so they basically, they're rooting right in the soil that we use to um, produce them in. It's a finer mix than what we standardly pot with, but mm. it's a seed mix and it'll grab onto the cuttings quite easily. So what we do is um, generally we'll take a two node cutting on this. You could go down to one node if necessary and the node is where the um, uh, leaves come off the stem. And so then we'll we cut them up like so. And this cutting that I took off gave us three cuttings. 
And then this one here is pretty tight, so I'd probably go up to there. And then um, trim that off, and we can go up to there. And so now we have, um, out of those two shoots that we took off, we have six cuttings. And then in propagation, we um, want to reduce the canopy or the surface of the leaf, so we trim them off like so. Because it transpires in the, the two things, trans of water. Yes, two things that transpire and also to create um, less density in the flat so that each cutting has a space for it to um, uh, you know, access light and um, also keep some open space so the disease issues are, are the disease pressure is less um, in the uh, propagating flat. And so we cut these off. Right, because so if a leaf gets like really wet and moist and then it sits down on another leaf or something, it could provide the right, like, possibility it, for like rot. Rot, or, and yeah. this is not a high rot plant, but um, some plants that we have are like that. Um, and then we use a rooting hormone. Um, this is something that's been used for many, many years. Um, this is an IBA, endobutyric acid, um, and talc, talc powder. Um, and this is uh, medium rooting hormone. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much everything that we do is in this number two hormone. Uh, we do have two other um, strengths of it. Some of the hotter rooting things will go into a little higher concentration. And then they're simply um, uh, dipped into the rooting hormone and stuck into the pot. Now, generally with this plant, we double stick. So, and the reason we do that is it will um, create a quicker plant, a quicker finished plant in a fuller pot. You know, if you were growing, it's gonna grow one lemon tree, which is usually one central stem, then you take one cutting. But in terms of our production for a faster um, and fuller pot, excuse me, fuller pot, mm -hmm. um, you, we stick two cuttings per, plug like that and then um, in our production this tray would be all filled up and then critical in um, critical in any propagation is you want to make sure you water them um, so as soon as you put them in to give them a little give moisture. them drink yep and um, there's two things that go on when you strike a cutting. One is you're sticking it into a media. You want to be able to anchor it in, and that water actually is what anchors it in. Pulls all that soil in and tightens around it. Cuttings that are loose and floppy or, um, or you know, have a lot of air around them um, will root much slower or not at all. So we want to make sure that that was thoroughly saturated. And then what happens after this? And then from there, we would take this flat and we'll put it into our propagating benches. And um, just as a demonstration, we can um, take this and go into our propagating areas. Great. And um, we'll show you. So this area, actually, this is, this is an area where we, we're keeping things organized. This is yeah. where all of our citrus are being placed. Um, and then our, um, our flat would go, be set into the mist system like this. And you can see these are all the young cuttings that have been here for a while. And yeah. um, um, some of them have perhaps started to root, and it looks like they're still a little bit on the young side. Yeah. You can see when they actually, well, they've been here long enough to do something. But You have to tug on them probably a little bit yeah, sometimes. And, uh, yeah, this is a this is um, the kefir lime, yeah. um, and it roots very well in our oasis mm. oasis plug. So that's one of the things that we've learned over the years. But anyway, our ponderosa would sit in here. Now this has a um, boom system, which is right here yeah. that periodically over the day runs over the bench and mists it. And so um, you can see there's water on the leaves right now. So the mist system is started up in the morning, and it keeps everything damp so that it doesn't go into wilt. And that is the key to making things root. You know, if you're trying to do this in the home and you don't have a mist system, um, you're better off putting it in a plastic bag. Sort of like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And actually, that plant there, which is um, the powder puff or calyandra, if we don't do that, they won't even root in the mist. Wow. They have to have that much. And you're in a greenhouse, too. And we're in a greenhouse, yeah. yeah. So you learn those things as you go through um, in tri the trial and error. So um, then once our plants are rooted, um, they're moved into um, a holding area. These plug flats come out, they're moved into a holding area. 
and um, and then they wait for their um, for the cycle for potting. So there's a production sheet that comes down, and we have to pot so many every week or every two weeks um, to meet the demand of our customers. Is there a place that we can yes, see I that happening? Yes, I can show you that happening. Right? And we have come to where our ponderosas are. So these are trays of our ponderosa cuttings um, that have rooted. And if you look at them, you can see there's young shoots beginning oh, yeah, to, look at that already. to start there. And if, yep. we, if we got in here and we lifted some of these out, we can see that the plant is rooted. So oh, the young yeah, roots that have started. Now, um, and you can see some of these leaves have been cut back. Some mm -hmm. of them didn't, depending upon the size. That, that probably came, this flat here is very cut, so it came off of like what we did with very large leaves. Mm -hmm. The leaves are smaller, they leave some of them on. And so um, now this, these flats will stay here for quite some time. So the potting is done according to the demand. And um, many of these young cuttings here won't be potted. Um, until springtime. So mm. they'll sit here during the winter time. They'll actually grow out. You can see some of this growth right in here, which has started to come out. And all of this will grow up. And the, the hitch to what we do is because we're not wholesalers, we little pieces go out every time. Yeah. We have to hold this yeah. for this long period of time. And that's time. a lot of space in your and That's greenhouse. a lot of cost and space, yeah. right? But you know, it's the um, way that we grow here for our um, for our retail business. Some of those lemons I'm just like, pointing out yeah. are, actually have flowers yeah. on them. So the thing about lemons and limes is they can fruit and flower all year round. Generally, like all citrus, they will do their flush in late winter, or early spring and put out their crop of fruit, but they can do it at any time of year. And you can come in and find lemon flowers on our lemons pretty much all year round. Maybe yeah. in the dead of winter we don't see it. But, yeah. you know, this is um, late, for, uh, for early, mid-fall, and so they're still flowering. But well, it's and, just neat to see after a, a, yeah. a cutting, you know, nonetheless. And so what that was is the cuttings had, the tips of those cuttings all had flower buds in mm -hmm. them. We didn't see it. Yeah. Right? And then they went into propagation and then they decided to grow and the yeah. first thing that came out were the flowers. <laughs> and so what we do is we'll take our tray I, and um, they brought one in onto a potting bench and now we're going to pop them up. Great. Yeah. Let's, let's go, go see it. Let me, um, let me grab a tray here. So um, this is our tray of um, ponderosa um, cuttings that have um, rooted. They're not probably as far along as um, we would normally do. See all the, the new growth that's yeah. on the top here? Normally we would wait until all of that came out, but um, at this cycle um, we we're still have some here that we can work with. And so then it's a very simple process. This is our potting bench or a, 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 propagating area, and these are trays of um, peat light soil that we use um, that um, is a little coarser than our seed mix. Yep, I and, can see that. And so then they simply um, unplug them, and in days prior to this, in the early days, um, we would pot everything. Now, this whole cycle of putting plants in plugs was not around, and that was, um, you know, back when I was a kid. And so everything was hand potted, and we still do a little bit of that, um, yeah. depending upon the propagating the. We use a lot of sand; that's one of my favorites yeah. for rooting things. And it roots things that can't be rooted in soil, and so that all has to be hand potted. But normally, what we do is we're working with a plug, and then the plug is set in like this, and it goes very fast. I mean, um, you know, it's just simply take it out and put it in. Um, I'm working, you can see there's two cuttings again. Yeah, two cuttings see, in the pot. The yeah, and then we. And then you just like stick your finger in there to put a hole yeah, and Yeah, it's then called you dibbling. In. You put, dig, dig your hole, you drop yeah. it in. Uh, this flat was sitting on top, so it's a little dry. It's a little yeah. harder to work with. If you have moisture, it'll hold it. And then um, the flat is filled up. And again, key is to make sure that the um, plants get watered. Um, they settle, that settles them into the um, new soil and um, gets them on their way. And then from here, um, the flat will go out to a holding area, which um, I, we can demonstrate that. Mm -hmm.
And so um, this little area right here is where everything that gets potted comes out and gets dropped. And then from here, um, it'll go back out onto a bench and we can find the spot where ponderosa is going to be grown. And those young cuttings will sit there until they are finished and labeled. Now, um, with this particular crop, we do several sizes. That's our four inch squares. But a lot of what we do is a round pot, which yeah. you can see hanging up here. Yeah. Um, and these are all citrus. We grow citrus on our lines for two reasons. They love it up there where it's really warm and is a lot of light. They're also a relatively long-term crop, so we don't have to constantly be climbing up there and doing things with them. Um, and gives you more space for the other plants yeah, down here. Yeah, right. And but we don't. It's not a fast thing, so there's a lot of time goes to putting hanging things up on drip lines. Yeah. And um, and they, these are automatically watered also by um, day length. And once they're finished, obviously they come down and are put in the holding area. So we'll go find the ponderosas. These are our plants that are finished. Now, this is the round five inch pot mm -hmm. that we grow. And you can, again, you can see the two cuttings that are here. Yeah. Um, and these have actually been grown um, up on the drip line. So rather than going onto a bench like the four inch pots would mm -hmm. do, um, these have been put um, up on the drips where they've been grown. And now they've reached the size, they've got a label in them. Yep. And they're ready to be um, shipped to um, our customers. So. Um, this one here, um, which has, again, has it two plants on it. It's got new growth coming out of the top. See that already, yeah. Um, and so this one is going to go to summer rain. Yay! And so um, <laughs> I'll show you the process. Now that's going from production into our shipping department. So a picker comes and picks it up. And then um, there's order picks tickets that they've used to pick the plant up. And this would be a Ponderosa lemon. And um, it wouldn't actually know that it's going to some rain. It would just know that it is an order to be picked and what was in that and, um, and the size of the plant. And then it is put into a, um, a tray. That's not the tray they use. Mm -hmm. that in. It's put into a tray. And then from here, um, it goes up onto these carts that we have here. And then it goes into shipping. So let's take this plant into shipping and show you how the packing process is done. Great. So these are our um, pick carts. These are orders that are going out today. Um, you can see there's a diversity of plants that are here from customers that wanted all kinds of stuff. And, um, and now the shipping process will take these and, um, and wrap them and put them into boxes and work to safely get them to our customers. All right, so the next process, once they've come in here, Beth will take the order and um, you see the cart here that we have and this is the order that's um, gonna be shipped to um, New York, and she does a process of uh, processing them, which um, is ability for us to get them into the box without having the soil fall out and get to you in really poor shape. And um, we've tried many methods over the years. This one um, is a little bit um, involved and time consuming and has some expenses to it beyond, but um, it works quite well. And so the, the packing material there will hold the soil down, the plastic on the top holds it from falling out. So in shipping plants, you need to uh, make sure that um, those two things are achieved. And then the next one is to keep it from um, shifting around in the box mm -hmm. so that it gets damaged. And believe it or not, we do have our damage, um, you know, we. We have times when things get crushed or, you know, things go away and people get things that are uh, not the way we would like it. And of course, we always reship them to the mm -hmm. customer to make it right for them. But um, it's a kind of a tough thing once they get into the mail system, you yeah. know, being thrown around and dropped. But you should really be able to take that box when you're done and throw it across the room, yeah. here, you know, and just have it land on the ground yeah. and still come out right. So from here, it will go to um, our boxer. Mm -hmm. So um, this is Carlos. He does our boxing and many other things for us. Um, and um, 
He's chosen the size box that will uh, fit the plant in, and um, the stake is there to keep the plant from moving mm -hmm. around, and then it's tubed and set into the box. And key to doing this, as you can see, he's packing it in, so he's mm -hmm. putting pressure on that plant and yep. putting pressure on the pot so that it can't shift. Right. And that is key to keeping this. And you notice the top here is kind of loose, so yeah. the leaves have a place. The tubing is like a sleeve that goes into um, any kind of floral shipments. So mm -hmm. they, they pull the leaf up, mm -hmm. and that helps keep it from getting damaged mm. also. Yep. And then it, from there, it will go down to um, our processing and um, labeling area and Victor's working at that today. So the weight is calculated and um, and then, you know, you have to make sure the order's going to the right person, yeah. right? So that's all, um, yeah. they actually have a pick slip that's put in here, mm -hmm. we didn't have one on this one, but they'd have a pick slip that would go into there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, unpacking instructions and stuff and you're added to the box. And then the box is taped. And then um, a label would be put on, mm -hmm. and um, and that also has the postage attached to it. And then it's set um, over onto a box here. Now we ship through FedEx, through UPS, and through the United States Postal Service. And so each pile is um, organized that way, obviously. And then um, sometime during the day, they'll show up with a truck and load them up, and away they go. And away they go, and then that's how we get our plants. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you so much for showing us the whole process. Great. Yeah. If you enjoyed this video, then give it a thumbs up. Subscribe and hit the notifications bell, as it'll not only help the channel grow, but will let you know when the next episodes launch. And if you'd like to support the channel, then check out our newly launched shop on homesteadbrooklyn.com. The first collection, Forever Kippy, is in memory of my pet hen whom you saw in this video. For every 100 products sold, $100 will be donated directly to the Wild Bird Fund, which is the only rehabilitation center in New York City helping hurt and abandoned birds, which is where I found Kippy. Thanks for your support.